Hello people, in this video we want to look at this recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay, we want to look only at this nerve, recurrent laryngeal nerve. From this inferior ganglion of vagus, what is arising guys? From inferior ganglion of vagus, you have two things arising. You have the vagus nerve, okay? And here you have one more nerve, that is the superior laryngeal nerve. So superior laryngeal nerve is the one that uh, we saw just now, right? In, of the two nerves which supply larynx, you have superior laryngeal nerve. And the other one is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Recurrent laryngeal nerve comes from this vagus nerve, which just came out of this inferior ganglion of vagus. Right, guys, did you understand? From the inferior ganglion of vagus, you have two things coming out the superior laryngeal nerve and the vagus nerve. This vagus nerve goes further down, right? Going down, down, down. This is the vagus nerve. And here you can see there's a branch arising from this vagus nerve. This is the which is going back upwards. That is why it is called as a recurrent laryngeal nerve. This is on the left side. On the left side, what happens? It goes in a, and it is uh, coming up from where? Near the arch of iota. So it is going uh, around this arch of iota on the left side okay on the right side uh, the same vagus nerve you can see here the vagus nerve is marked here the vagus nerve it gives out a branch okay and it is that branch is a recurrent laryngeal nerve on the right side again that is going back upwards that's why it's called recurrent and it is going around the subclavian artery here on the right side it is going under the uh, subclavian artery and in the left side, it is going around the arch of iota. So, left one is going to be longer. Okay. So, let us look at this. Laryn larynx nerve supply. You have the superior laryngeal nerve. It arises from the inferior ganglion of vagus. And the then you have the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which arises from the vagus nerve. So, these are the two nerves that supply the larynx. The superior again has internal external. Okay. But here in this video, we told you we want to focus only on this recurrent laryngeal nerve. This recurrent laryngeal nerve has a right and a left, we already told you. What happens to the right? The right is um, arising from the vagus at the level of the right subclavian artery, right? And uh, this one ascends, yes, it ascends, that's why it's called as a recurrent laryngeal nerve. It ascends where? Between the trachea and the esophagus. What about the left one now? Left one is um, coming from the vagus nerve in the mediastinum at the level of the arch of iota. Yes, at the arch of iota. It loops around the arch of iota and again it ascends where? Into the neck. Okay. Something similar here, tracheoesophageal groove. So this left recurrent nerve is going to be much longer than the right one. As this left one is much longer, it is more prone to getting paralysis damage. So let us look at this uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve. So you can see here and here. Right, you can see the recurrent laryngeal nerve here somewhere behind this it should be the left one. Okay, so look at the larynx uh, nerve supply <clears throat> from the superior laryngeal nerve. You have two nerves coming, which are the two nerves you have the internal and then the external. Okay, so only two nerves you have to remember superior laryngeal nerve and the recurrent laryngeal nerve, but from superior you again have two branches internal and external. Okay, so let us look at what these actually supply. So, motor supply comes from what? From the recurrent laryngeal nerve mostly. Okay, the motor supply mostly comes from like rec recurrent laryngeal nerve, except for the screecothyroid muscle. What about the sensory supply to larynx? Again, that comes from, um, from the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Look at this. Let us say this is the vocal fold. Okay, this is anterior and this is posterior. So, below the vocal fold, whatever muscles are there, the sensory supply for them comes from this recurrent laryngeal nerve, which is coming from below. So, whatever is below the vocal fold, whatever is coming from below, that nerve will supply, which is that, that is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. This is for sensory supply. Who will supply above the vocal uh, cord? That will be internal laryngeal nerve. Okay. So, here you can see very clearly, this recurrent laryngeal nerve is what we are focusing on. It will give motor supply and it will give the sensory supply. Both the supply it is giving. So, recurrent laryngeal nerve is giving both motor and sensory supply. Okay. Now, uh, one thing you have to focus on, where is this uh, superior laryngeal nerve? There is internal and external, right? So, external seems to be giving motor supply and internal seems to be giving sensory supply. See, this uh, larynx paralysis as such, whether it is because of the superior laryngeal nerve or recurrent laryngeal nerve, it can happen because of Supranuclear causes, which is uh, rare anyways, uh, nuclear causes uh, because of nucleus ambiguous in medulla. Uh, this nuclear causes can be like um, 
neoplastic, polio, etc. High vagal lesions, let us look at this. Vagus nerve may be involved intracranially at the exit from the jugular foramen or in the parapharyngeal space. Then you have low vagal or recurrent laryngeal nerve. So here, this is what we want to focus on, isn't it? <clears throat> so the, because of this, there can be laryngeal paralysis. Then there can be systemic causes like diabetes, syphilis, diphtheria, typhoid, streptococcal or viral infections, lead poisoning, etc. Idiopathic, there can be 30% causes. So that means you really don't know why it happened. What are we focused on now? Today we are focusing only on recurrent laryngeal nerve. So look at the causes for the recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis, low vagal trunk or recurrent laryngeal nerve. So here you have, uh, if it is right, why it is affected? If it's left, why get, does it get affected? And both uh, left, right and left, why do they get affected? You can see here the left causes are more because the left course is also more. So that's why they said the left lar recurrent laryngeal nerve is more prone to paralysis. Okay, let's look at these uh, causes. Mainly here they're talking about the neck. Thyroid surgery, thyroid carcinoma, cervical esophagus, cervical lymphadenopathy. <clears throat> okay, then what is this? Aneurysm of subclavian artery, carcinoma affects right lung, tuberculosis uh, of cervical pleura, idiopathic. Okay, then what about uh, left? Left they are talking about. Let's zoom a little. Neck and mediastinal causes. So neck and mediastinal. So as it goes low below, it can, uh, it is even in the mediastinum, some problems can affect it. Neck, what and all can be there? Trauma, thyroid, thyroid surgery, thyroid disease, carcinoma, cervical esophagus, cervical lymphadenopathy, mediastinum, bronchogenic cancer, thoracic esophagus, aortic. So here they are talking about the iota. There they spoke about subclavian. Here they are talking about iota because these nerves go around them, right? Mediastinal lymphadenopathy, enlarged left auricle. So, are they talking about the heart here? Intrathoracic surgery, idiopathic. Always write one idiopathic. Unknown cause. Both. If both are affected, why? Again, here same thing. Thyroid surgery, carcinoma of the thyroid, esophagus. Blame all those things. Okay. Actually, you can very uh, easily identify those both causes here. See, both. What did they say? Thyroid surgery. Thyroid surgery, thyroid surgery. Carcinoma, thyroid. Carcinoma, thyroid. Carcinoma, thyroid. Cervical esophagus cancer, carcinoma cervical esophagus, carcinoma cervical esophagus, cervical lymphadenopathy, cervical lymphadenopathy, cervical. We found all the causes. Okay, so we have seen the causes of laryngeal paralysis. Okay, so one of those causes will be recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis. Now, what will happen if recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis happens? Um, unilaterally if it happens what will happen that is the right or the left one of them gets affected or bilaterally both are gone then what will happen so you we can try to guess isn't it so what does uh, this uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve supply it supplies motor for almost all muscles and it supplies sensory for everything below the vocal cord so let's guess what will happen unilateral paralysis what will happen bilateral paralysis what will happen let us see okay so here you have the vocal folds, right? So this is uh, neutral, let us see. Now if you want them to come to the center, what should happen? You should have adduction, right? Adduction. And if you want them to go away, abduction. So unilateral means one side only there will be problem. Let us see what will happen if there is unilateral paralysis of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So, motor supply will be affected to all muscles except what? Except the cricothyroid. So, all muscles gone except the cricothyroid. So, cricothyroid is perfectly fine. If cricothyroid is perfectly fine, it can still adduct. Right? It can still adduct. Uh, so, it will be, it will go to paramedian position. Though it cannot go to median position, it will go to paramedian position. At least it can go to paramedian position. The whole job of larynx is to protect the respiratory lower respiratory uh, airway right so always it wants to close only and all the muscles will help in adduction except the posterior cricoarytenoid so here you have the cricothyroid which is working fine so it can still come close isn't it so here it will remain in what it will remain in the paramedian position so the problem here what will be affected the posterior cricoarytenoid which, uh, muscle which is the only muscle which abducts Right, it's the only muscle which abducts. That muscle gets affected, so it this cannot move laterally. Laterally, it cannot move. 
okay so laterally it cannot move so the vocal cord will remain at the paramedial position it cannot abduct okay it will remain here which is fine this side is fine right so this can come close it can go away everything it can do so uh, the one that is fine has to come more close it can come up till paramedian position where it has to come and it they will start adducting okay so these people will be asymptomatic they may have very slight change in voice but uh, gradually what will happen this one will start moving uh, closer to the paramedial position of the other uh, cord and this uh, this side cord will cross the midline it will reach the paramedian position of the other side and uh, the patient will be able to easily manage in this case there is not uh, no treatment required as in generally so now let us move on to bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis can you say bilateral bilateral yeah recurrent recurrent laryngeal laryngeal nerve no paralysis Paralysis. You know what bilateral means? Bilateral means both sides. What is bilateral? Both sides. Yeah. So bilateral usually they are ha they are saying in thyroidectomy etc. It can happen. Okay. Unilateral they said mostly carcinoma one side it will be there and unilateral it can affect. Bilateral usually thyroidectomy that is you try to remove the thyroid and uh, possibly you uh, damage the recurrent laryngeal nerve on both sides. Now what will happen? Let's look at this. So both sides muscles. are gone they cannot move laterally right so they are going to be something like this laterally definitely they cannot move so they should be something like this or what position of cords all intrinsic muscles of larynx are paralyzed okay except the cricothyroid isn't it that is external muscle is it the vocal cords lie in medial or paramedian position due to unopposed action of cricothyroid muscles so main problem for these people will be what the airway is so inadequate right so they will they will have dyspnea strider but their voice will be very nice because voice doesn't have an issue because these folds are together right so dyspnea strider main you remember and this dyspnea strider will become worse on exertion or during attack of acute laryngitis so what will you do for these people just remember recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis the vocal cords are actually close together only so voice has such no issues if unilateral they have a problem then they can still have asymptomatic life bilateral they will have problem in breathing so what will you do for bilateral like recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis tracheostomy basically uh, if this guy is not able to breathe if it's an emergency then you have to do the tracheostomy or if these people develop upper respiratory tract infection okay so it can be temporary or permanent if it is permanent uh, tracheostomy then you'll have to give a speaking valve so that those people can talk there are many ways of uh, giving speech again otherwise mainly what we want to do the vocal cords are together right so we want to kind of separate them so widening of respiratory airway they are suggesting something called as transverse cordotomy or kashima operation kashima operation something like this they are suggesting so uh, they are saying that this is uh, soft tissue at the junction of the membranous cord and vocal process of arytenoid is excised laterally with the laser this provides good airway so what are they doing here guys soft tissue at the junction of membranous cord and vocal process of arytenoid is excised laterally with laser then you have partial arytenoidectomy medial part of the arytenoid is excised with laser okay sometimes only the vocal process is ablated of the arytenoid okay then you have reinnervation procedure innervate paralyzed posterior cricoarytenoid muscle okay so this posterior cricoarytenoid is the main one that abducts right so somehow bring back the functioning of this posterior cricoarytenoid so that it can pull these vocal folds away so that the person can eat. okay then they are talking about <clears throat> okay with this reinnervation procedure pca they will implant a nerve muscle pedicle of stenohyoid or omohyoid muscle with its nerve supply from ansa hypoglossus this procedure has not been very successful obviously all these nerve and all you cannot uh, replace so easily right then thyroplasty type 2 there are so many types of thyroplasty remember it's type 2 here it creates lateral expansion of larynx obviously that's what we want to do we want to laterally expand right so you will it is similar to vocal cord lateralization so they are talking about lateralized lateral expansion of entire larynx is it 
quality of my voice may not be good obviously you're putting the vocal cords apart so the voice may not be good so lateral expansion of larynx great so in this video we finished this uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis guys so whole idea was to look at this like recurrent laryngeal nerve what it is anatomy everything and uh, larynx nerve supply recurrent laryngeal nerve right left how they are different now uh, basically why this right left are different in embryology you can see how the left one gets pulled down okay in embryology you can see nice videos on that larynx nerve supply we saw how what the actual uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve supplies that's what we wanted to look at causes of laryngeal paralysis we saw how uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis also contributes uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis can be unilateral or bilateral. Usually, uh, in bilateral cases, they will have dyspnea and strider, and these are the treatments for that. And this is a vocal cord position. That's all for now in this video. Bye bye. Bye bye.